Hey guys, today I'm back with another video, and I will be showing everyone how to win in Rusted Warfare. I will be showing you five different methods to, you know, win uh, multiplayer Rusted Warfare, of course, because single player against AI is a lot easier than multiplayer. I might do a tutorial for how to beat, you know, impossible AI eventually, but not yet. So what we do for, or the fifth way, or I guess it's the first way I'm doing, but, you know, it's going to be number five, uh, is the minigun mech rush. And this is a really good rush. You really only need, like, two anti-air mechs on it. But my advice is you have them guard unit because they are faster than it. So you want them to, you know, follow it instead of going ahead of it because these things are much weaker. But the minigun mech is a really good rush because it outranges tier 1 turrets, flames, and tier 2 turrets. And tier 2 turrets are going to be like the biggest threat uh, defensively early game uh, for ground units because tier 3 turrets aren't really going to be there and artillery uh, large amounts of artillery can be really good but just one or two this thing can easily destroy it can also wipe out large amounts of laser defense as you can see I had an old test here with 19 uh, laser defense things and one artillery turret Unfortunately, it wasn't quite able to beat it. It got all of them down, but then they start re started recharging. But uh, the minigun mech is really, really good. Oh my gosh. <laughs> against laser defense because it its speed, uh, its firing rate increases over time. So the more it shoots, the faster it will shoot. Which, of course, is really, really good against laser defense. Because it blocks each and every bullet, and when you have something shooting extremely quickly, it just, just uh, takes it out really quickly. So you can use them tactically to, you know, for that purpose. Um, but my main advice for minigun mech rushes is to just go in, destroy an enemy's front line, you know, like on middle, and then... Claim middle is your own, put your own defense up. Um, if they seem like they don't have much defense, you can just send it right into their base. I recommend attacking the command center first, of course, instead of builders. But I'm pretty confident. Okay, we might lose this, that's interesting. <laughs> but, okay, no, we're going to win. So as you can see, you can fairly easily take out someone's base um, if they don't have anything to stop you you can do that really effectively if they only have a couple tier 2 turrets you know maybe some flamethrowers even just an artillery you can destroy it and take this out and win a game um, the disadvantage is or maybe not win a game but you know at least kill one person the disadvantages of this are um, it takes a long time to make and a lot of money uh, early game, so the minigun mech costs 5000 to make, not to mention a tier 2 mech factory is also very expensive. I believe it's like 4000 or something. Here, let's check that out. I'm sorry. So we make a mech factory. Uh... I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I don't really make mech factories very often. And tier 2-ing it costs 4,000, so that's 9,500 to produce a minigun mech. And you also need um, anti-air mechs. Otherwise, it can just get destroyed by air, you know, very easily. But the thing is, the time to make it, as well as certain vulnerability if they take this out, you know, and while you're spending your time making it, they can have already claimed middle and destroyed things in your base. So I recommend only using the minigun mech rush if you have a competent teammate defending you while you produce it. If you have someone who's able to hold the front line while you produce it, though, you can easily claim middle usually. Um, on to number four now. Alright guys, so an important note I have for... 
the what you saw just now um the minigun mech and the next two things um is that they are all rushes so the th first three methods i'm going to show you are rushes and of course the smaller the map the more effective rushes will be i for forgot to describe this and i think it's important that i do it more than more in just you know text because um S the size of the map really is vital to your strategy. The larger it is, the more income you will need to be able to gain control over it, and the less effective rushes will be. But all of the rushes that I'm going to show you um, are fairly effective on some large maps and pretty much all small maps. Except um, I didn't really cover naval maps that well. Uh, but let's get back to the video, guys. Number four. Alright guys, so the fourth method I'm going to be showing you today is the um, tank rush uh, method. I, I prefer to call it a heavy tank rush because I, I don't know, it just sounds cooler than, you know, tank rush. But it really isn't just a heavy tank rush. You can rush solely with heavy tanks because they can attack the ground and air, but that is not... Um, usually as good as this so if you have plasma tanks mixed with heavy tanks you know AA missile tank and maybe even a couple mammoth tanks in you can build this start the building this rush you know very quickly uh, mainly the heavy tanks for it and you know some plasma tanks maybe save up and get an AA missile tank probably not mix in a mammoth tank for a while but if you have the income to do do that yeah you should um so this is a highly effective rush for maps with like bottlenecks like this you really don't want to do like tank rushes on uh coastal maps because they can just bombard you with ships which is really annoying <laughs> so unless you have a good navy probably don't want to do this on naval maps but on maps like this it's really good because they can't build that much defense you can start this rush really early game, claim middle, and then go on and, you know, destroy this. Go destroy... I've destroyed an entire team with a tank rush before. Of course, I did have a little a bit of support from a piece of paper. Uh, but that's, you know... <laughs> My force survived the entire game. And the other players weren't really that good. But just saying, if you do this method, it has a really good uh, success rate for at least claiming middle, if not uh, killing probably one, two people. Um, it's just a rush that can really change the course of early game. And late game doesn't matter if all your enemies are dead before it ever happens. Um, some disadvantages are, you know... Amp jets, this thing can't really handle that. And heavy tanks have some air defense for, you know, light air attacks that come at you, but they're not really that good against air. Um, but this thing is really hard to beat. Like, even late game, the only thing that can really destroy it are large amounts of air. You know, uh, very late game, though, you'll probably just have mammoth tanks and anti-air tanks. Um, but that's method four for you. Number three. Guys, as for um, number three, we have the gunship rush. And, of course, I got um, an expert here to talk about it. Yes, this is uh, my TED Talk. <laughs> yes, a piece of paper is now here uh, to deliver TED Talks. Yeah, I tend to go for these a lot when playing with... Uh... Fox, you may see on some streams that yeah, I, I do this. I do a lot of gunship rushes. Now the reason why he does gunship rushes is it pairs really well with the other rushes that I've showed you earlier in the video, like the mini gun mech rush and the uh, just tank rush. Um. Uh yeah. Yeah. Especially heavy tank rushes because it. Makes them have to focus too much on land extremely early. 
Yeah, so you just have your, like, um, the enemies just start building a ton of, you know, ground and having to focus on that because, of course, you have heavy tanks that have been, you know, harassing them for a while. And then usually when people are focused on, you know, land, they don't really build very much anti-air and you can just come in, take middle or whatever you need to. You can even win a game with them if you have enough. <laughs> Usually, usually not multiplayer, but they... yeah, well, multiplayer usually um, gunships aren't too effective, and that's another reason why they have to be used in combination because they're pretty easy, I would say, to counter. Yeah, I've never really dominated another team using gunships. Yeah, as you can see, they don't have very much uh, health. Their attack is pretty good. Um, I often use them to overwhelm, but I think they're really good as uh, mainly support units. Yeah. So for the gunship rush, I you don't really need to use them, uh, or you can use them, but they might not, you know, necessarily win you the match immediately but they can provide a strong advantage for taking over middle uh, because they're air units and if you've been using the other rushes especially with someone else <clears throat> uh, then you know they'll be expecting land but you'll have air units which are also more mobile in this map which is oftentimes very important Uh, anyways, a piece of paper, do you have anything else to say about gunships before we move yeah. on to the next subject? Really? Not really. Quoting it, 2020. Alright guys, on to number- Oh, they're trying to counter gunship rushes. <laughs> really? The AI is getting stronger. Oh, yes. Oh yeah, one last thing about gunships. You should always build up heavy interceptors in combination with gunships, because gunships alone uh, can't actually attack other air, and so they <laughs> just get dominated. Yes, uh, observe. Here, I'm going to send a full force of eight gunships to go attack that. You can't even have them attack it. Like, they won't do it. So, uh, they also get torn apart really quickly. Like, look how fast it just destroys them. Um, but yeah, that's going to be it for number two. Moving on to number one. Number two. Alright, so the second method, or, you know, number two, is what... It's not exactly like a heavy tank rush or what you would expect from that. It's just what to do, really, instead of the units to produce. Um, but this is really important information. So, And it also explains why the previous three rushes are so important. Okay. So, uh, also, by the way, I'm sorry, the formatting on this video was a little weird. But you guys can still learn everything you need to learn from it, which I think is good. Um, so, the most important thing early game is you want to claim middle or your enemy's base. The more ground you can occupy, the more likely you are to win. Okay, so early game, you're like, oh yeah, if I claim all this ground, I'm going to win late game because I have more stuff, right? But the thing is... If you claim all, like, generally in this map, if you claim, like, up to here, early game, and have a good force, you're going to win before late game even ever happens, because you're just going to control so much and have so much more income that you can just come along and kill them one by one. And they can't really stop you at all. Um, but claiming middle is very, very important. If you um, have an attack that like you know attacks like one side of their base and completely wipes them out you might as well just make a couple drop ships send it to their base and have land units and you know factories producing units there because something else i notice land units being produced like in their base is just really powerful 
especially when you you still ha are you know producing air units in your own base. Uh, don't want to finish the game, <laughs> but yeah, the more ground you take up or control, yeah, the more ground you control, the more powerful you are, and the more likely you are to win. At a certain point, they just don't really stand a chance at all. But yeah, you can be like tricky about this. You know, sometimes people will. I've seen, you know, a piece of paper just land his builders right here and start building, and then no one finds him. And by that time, he already has enough force to do some things. And you can send him, you know, wherever. Just try to claim some of the enemy's base if you can, but definitely middle. Um, so you can use any of the three previous rushes I told you about, excluding gunship rush. I mean, it you can claim middle with that sometimes, but you'll usually want the support. Uh, the rush I highly recommend is just the tank rush. It's just really, really good early game, I think. And it can also be used to support, you know, the minigun mech rush. Uh, so that's the best way to claim middle, I would say, you know, make a, a tank rush and... Yeah, that's number two for you guys. Number one. Alright guys, now it is time for the number one way on how to win matches in Rusted Warfare. Now, I don't... I, I haven't ranked um, any of the other things, really, in this video. But this is the one I will say, if you can get to this point, you're not going to lose. Unless they do the exact same thing. Um... You just build up a ton of income. Uh, 1,694 isn't actually even that much. And, you know, for multiplayer. Or not always. And then you just start producing fire bees. Uh, unit cap fire bees. And there's really nothing your enemy can do about that. Like, nothing effectively counters fire bees. They are just the most overpowered unit in the game that don't have a counter. Because they're meant to be the thing that finish matches. Otherwise, matches could just go on for much longer than they normally do. And they do go on for quite a while. But Fire Bees are, you know, very good units. Um, so the number one way to win is survive until late game. Make as much income as you can, and then make as many fire bees as you can. You can also make nukes, but you still need some units, and for that, I recommend fire bees. Anyways, guys, that's the last way to win in Rusted Warfare multiplayer. I hope you, this video helped you, and if it did, please consider subscribing. That's going to be all for now, guys. See you later.